What's up guys? Justin here with TheCGEssentials.com. So in today's video, we're going to talk about some of the best features that come along with the node management add-on Node Wrangler that comes with Blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so the first thing you need to do is you need to make sure that you've enabled Node Wrangler in your add-ons. So you can just go to Edit Preferences and then just go into your add-ons and you want to look for Node Wrangler and make sure that it's checked. So as soon as it's checked, you're going to be able to come in here and use the tools contained inside of Node Wrangler to work with your different nodes. We'll talk more about some of this stuff in a minute, but for now, let's take a look at some of the things that it can do. So Node Wrangler is basically designed to make managing your nodes a lot easier. And so it does that by adding a bunch of different tools in here. You can see some of them by tapping the N key in this window and clicking on Node Wrangler right here. But there's a ton of different things in here for helping you set up nodes inside of Blender. So for example, let's say that I had these three nodes right here and I wanted them to be aligned. So right now we could come in here and we could just drag them right like manually and align them, but that can really be kind of time consuming, especially depending on how complex your node setup is. What you can do instead is you can just select all of these and do a shift equals when you do a shift equals, what that's going to do is that's going to line these up so that they're in a straight line like this. So let's say that we wanted this to be more in this order. I could just select them and do a shift equals and notice how lining them up is now really easy. So there's a ton of different features like this in Node Wrangler for making your life easier. So another one is you can also select all of these and you can add a frame to them, right? And so you can either do that by selecting them and then clicking on the button for frame selected, or you can do a shift P in order to add the frame. And then once you add the frame in here, notice how those are all contained inside of the frame. So you can move the frame around and all of those nodes are going to move together like this. You can also select the individual nodes in here and the frame will resize with those like this. You can also, if you want to get rid of the frame, just select it, click on delete right here. That's going to allow you to really quickly frame objects, which will really help with your organization in your node tree. So there's another cool little feature in here that doesn't get used a whole lot, but notice how these all have the word color ramp in here. And so say you wanted to change these nodes right here, you could select them, click on modify labels, and then we could just add something to the begin beginning and the end. So in this case, we're going to add dash Justin's to these and notice how it actually removed the color ramp, but that would be really easy to add back in. We could just type in color ramp, add a space and hit the enter key or hit the OK button. Notice how that comes in here and that'll adjust all of the different labels in here of the nodes that we had selected. And so one of the things that can get a little bit tricky when you're working with nodes is it's really easy to kind of lose sight of what the different things inside of the nodes are doing, right? So for example, I've got this color ramp in here and I can see that it's adjusting my final output, but I can't really visualize very well exactly what this particular node does. Well, the cool thing about this is if you want to, you can select a node and you can actually do a shift control click and click on a node. And what that's gonna do is that's going to temporarily add a viewer node in here so that you can see specifically what a node is doing. So notice how I can do a control shift click on any of these and it's adding a viewer node in here and it's plugging that into my material output. So I can see what any of these different nodes is doing just by doing a shift control click and clicking on them. So I can add a viewer and I can see what my noise texture is doing, really anything inside of my inside of my node tree. If I do a shift control click, it's going to add a viewer in here. And then when you want to toggle back to your final object, you can just do a shift control click on your principled BSDF and it's going to plug that back into your material output here. So another thing that Node Wrangler is fantastic for, I use it for this all the time, is setting up the PBR materials inside of your scenes. So let's say for example that I was to add a principal BSDF shader to this floor right here. Well, what I want to do is I want to set up a principal or a PBR material um, through this shader. So I needed to have the different maps associated with it. So the color map, the roughness map, all those different things. Well, with Node Wrangler enabled, what you can do is you can select the principal BSDF, do a control shift T right here. And what that's going to do is that's going to allow you to come in here and that's going to allow you to select um, material maps and it'll automatically set up your PBR material. So let's say for example that I was to go with like a ground material and we'll just add a concrete material. But what I can do is I can select 
all of these different maps in here and notice how these maps have different abbreviations in here, right? So this one's my displacement map, this is my gloss, this is my normal, this is my color map. Well, if I click on principled texture setup, what that's gonna do is that's going to automatically set up a principled texture based on those maps. So notice what it does is it takes all of your textures and it plugs them in, it sets up your mapping, um, and then it plugs all of these into the proper nodes or slots as well. So for example, notice how my displacement is being plugged into my displacement over here. My normal is automatically set up where I'm getting the normal mapping over here. So you can use this to basically one click set up materials inside of Blender with all of the different maps. And so let's say you did something simpler. So let's say that you had just a principled BSDF shader. You don't wanna mess with all the maps. And so you just added an image texture node. So let's do a shift A, we'll add an image texture node right here and we'll plug it into our base color. And let's say that we were to apply maybe like a brick or something. And so let's say we were to just apply a brick right here. So we'll just apply the diffuse map right here. So we've got a brick material on my object. Well, a lot of the time, what you wanna do with your materials is you wanna set them up with mapping, right? So this needs to have some kind of texture coordinate mapping on it, um, other things like that. Well, what we could do is we could come in here and do a shift A and then add the texture coordinate node as well as a mapping node manually, and then set these up together, right? So we could drag this in here, drag this in here. We could drag our UV into our vector, things like that. Um, so we can do that manually, but there's a faster way to do this just by selecting our material right here. So if we select a material object, do a control T, it's automatically going to set up a texture coordinate node and a mapping node to this material without you having to go in and add those manually. So if you need to add mapping to objects, a control T is going to be a very fast way to do that. And so another thing that can be time consuming is hooking things up to multiple different nodes. So let's say for example, I'm just going to hold the control key. And so let's say for example, and I'm going to do a control right click to delete out the nodes that we're connecting those right there. And let's say that we wanted to plug this vector into all of these different textures. Well, you could click and drag into each one of these, right? Like this, but that's gonna be really time consuming. So instead of doing that, if you wanna hook in multiple different textures to a single node, what you can do is you can select the textures or the nodes that you want to connect, right? So I'm just doing a shift click. Then you can do a shift click on the node you wanna connect from, and then you just do a Shift K on your keyboard. What that's gonna do is that's gonna automatically set up multiple different nodes in here, um, or it's gonna connect all of these different nodes together into the vector just like this. All right, so another thing that can be really helpful is let's say that you've got two shaders that you wanna to mix together, right? So we've got our blue, we've got our green, and then I've got some additional stuff up here that we're gonna use as our factor. But right now, what you would have to do is do a Shift A and then add a mix shader in here. So we're gonna do a mix shader. Then you would have to click and drag into your shader, click and drag into your shader, and click and drag over here and then click and drag everything together, right? So, I mean, it works, but it's a little bit clunky. Um, what we can do instead though, is let's say that we wanted to add or mix these two shaders together. Well, I can do a shift click and then you can do a control numpad zero. And what that's gonna do is that's automatically going to add a mix shader between those two objects right here. And so notice how this mix shader right here is set up where I can uh, set my factor between the two. Well, then if I have something interesting like a color ramp node that goes in here, I can just drag that in just like this um, in order to set my factor. So you can use this to mix two objects together by doing a control numpad zero really easily. Another kind of cool function is you can also swap out or replace kinds of shaders just by doing a shift S. So if I do a shift S with this uh, Musgrave shader selected, right? So if I do a shift S, notice how it gives me the option to switch my type. So right now, right, this is set up as a Musgrave texture. Well, let's say I wanted to make this a noise texture instead, I could just click on noise texture right here. That's going to swap out the kind of node that I have in here. So what it did is it basically replaced that Musgrave texture with a noise texture and it kept the same node set up in here. So it's really easy to swap out different nodes just by doing a shift S. 
So another thing I find myself using more and more is the quick connect function. And so what the quick connect function does is it basically allows me to drag between different nodes um, without having to get like super specific, right? So like for example, if I'm zoomed out and I wanna drag and set this up where this is linked to these nodes and I don't wanna do the one where I automatically connect them all together, um, I have to really kind of zoom in here so that I can actually see these points in order to drag these in manually, right? But what you can do instead is if you hold down the Alt key and drag with your right mouse button, notice how we're getting these little dots in here. So it's basically showing me, okay, if I was to let up right now, it's going to connect um, between this particular node and this node right here. So if I hold Alt and right click and drag, what that's gonna do is that's gonna automatically click these together. And I can do that from dragging anywhere on top of this node instead of me having to really zoom in and find these tiny little points. All right, so th there are some other quick little functions. Like for example, if you do an Alt X, um, that's gonna allow me to delete my unused nodes. That basically means any nodes that aren't a part of my node tree or that aren't being linked in right here are not going to, um, it's going to delete those out. So you can use Alt X to delete your unused nodes. Another fun one is you can also, if you select multiple nodes in here. So if I select this right here, notice how it has three nodes coming off of it right now. Well, if I do a forward slash like this, it's going to basically allow me to add a reroutes to all of the nodes or all of the outputs coming out of this. So for example, if I was to add reroutes to all outputs, what it's gonna do is it's gonna automatically add this reroute right here, um, just like this. So you can also click this and you can do a forward slash again, and we're gonna be able to add another reroute Right. So you can use this in order to quickly set up reroute nodes in here as well. All right, so easily the one I use the most out of this list is the principal texture setup, but these others are really helpful as well. Leave a comment below, let me know what your favorite feature of Node Wrangler is as well. I'll link to some other material tutorials on this page, but as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.